Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Patty G Show. I'm your host, Patty G. This week, we are here with Stephen Perrette of Letterman's. We're going to talk a little bit about the history of how they got started, um, the importance of branding, sign making, and also giving back to the community in whatever way you possibly can. But before we get started with that, I want to give a big, wonderful shout out and thank you to the amazing folks that make this show possible each and every week. We begin with Government Taco, Falaya Real Estate, Blakeman's Health Center, Horizon Financial Group, Mercedes-Benz of Baton Rouge, and of course, our outfit of the day is brought to you by McClavey's Limited. And without further ado, Stephen, welcome to the show, man. Thanks. How Appreciate are you doing it. today? Doing well. Glad to be here. Good. I'm I am glad to have you on. So we we have a longer history of knowing each other than some of the past guests. So yeah. you actually taught a class at LSU while I was there getting my pair degree in accounting and entrepreneurship. That's right. I remember that. So you taught, uh, it was, what would we say before the show? Innovation Creat- and yeah, creativity. Innovation and creativity. Entrepreneurship 2000. So yep. within that, people may think you're initially a professor, but you're actually not. No. That's something you do on the side. That's, that's, that's your side, side gig. gig. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. <laughs> so for those that may not be aware, who are you and what do you do? Well, my name's Stephen Perrette. I'm, uh, I uh, have been in a family business called Letterman's here in Baton Rouge uh, for a number of years. Um, in the late 90s, I got into the family business um, and uh, have been in it since. It's been a it's been a great experience and opportunity, and um, you know it's it's allowed me to do other things like teach uh, and be involved in the community. So um, I like giving back, um, and the, the opportunity to go back to LSU and to teach and to talk about entrepreneurship and creating new ventures and startups and you know just running an existing business. Those are those are things that I really enjoy. So it's a uh, it's been a it's been a a real opportunity to be a part of that program over there and to meet people like yourself. Right. right? Yeah, I mean, it's it's also a good thing to communicate to students as well as they're getting their education that there are different paths in life to take. And the one you took going into the family business with Letterman's is something that kind of proves that concept. Yeah. So what what exactly is Letterman's? Letterman's, um, it's changed a lot over the years. Um, my parents bought that business with a business partner in 1983. Um, Letterman's actually started in 1949 here in Baton Rouge, in uh, downtown. In 49? Yeah, 1949. Um, it's, it's always been a Reaper Graphics company is what that term is, Reaper Graphics. And it was about reproducing... Um, technical documents, construction documents for architects, engineers, and contractors. So big blueprints, right? You built, didn't you build a house? You built something recently? Um, I did a, 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 home a, 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 a home yeah, renovation. Yeah, home renovation. You might have had some plans, right? I some did. big drawings on what needed to be done and the layout and elevations and all those kind of things. So, um, you know, that was the business, working with architects, engineers, and contractors to get them printed information so they can go build something. And, um, you know, that evolved a lot from making blueprints to blue lines to zero graphic printing to digital printing. Um, it, it, it evolved over the years. And one of the real challenges for our company that came about was just the digital technology, right? Being able to make take PDFs and share it online. Um, being able to, you know, really even started with CDs where they were burning discs to CDs and giving CDs away instead of printing a bunch of documents. So that business has 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 had some challenges with um, with with growth over the years, um, and um, we continued to print things for people. We got into distributing content and project data online, um, putting it into the cloud for our customers. Um, and, and that was a good line of business for us. It, it really helped to try to, you know, um, supplement the printing that we were losing. Um, and then we decided, well, we want to make a real change in our business and go into signage and graphics, right? That's, that's, pretty, that's a pretty it big a, change. It was a big change from technical documents that are black and white um, and not very involved in, like, the process of the construction of a building, right? 
Yeah, just the, it was pap- just the we, paper. Yeah, we print on, yeah. it and give it to somebody, and they go do something with it. So we're done with it as soon as we print it. And um, when we got into signage and graphics, we actually bought a local company. It was a company called um, Gold Star Signs here off of Florida Boulevard. So in what, just for a, a timeline reference, what, what year is this we're in now? Um, we're in um, 2022. <laughs> what what year was the company purchased we, uh, to do the graphic we printing? That, we bought that business in like 2010 or so. Okay. 2008, 2010, somewhere in that range. Um, so, we, we, you know, it's, it's been a while back. Um, we bought that business to get into uh, signage and graphics, right? So that we could have customers, mm-hmm. we could have equipment, we could have... Um, you know, um, experienced employees and, um, just kind of help us with that curve of learning curve and growth curve and all those things. And, um, it was a, it was really eye opening because that type of business of signage and graphics, we thought printing things is easy. We've been doing it a long time, but yeah. printing things for signage and graphics is very different. <laughs> it's not the same. The it's workflow is different. Yeah. The, the customer base is different. The, the file formatting, everything about it was different. You know, having to design something that actually gets printed versus somebody doing an AutoCAD drawing and giving us a, a final PDF that we just put in our system and click print. So it was very, it was very, it was very different. Um, but it, it put us into a space where we started um, working with the same type of clients, architects, engineers, and contractors, which has been our core business for many years. It, it put us in a space where now we're offering something different to them that they're using on their sites that we can print too, mm-hmm. right? So it's following our vision, our mission of as a company of being able to help our customers see their vision and print. It's following that guideline. So now we're printing signage and graphics. So we really got focused in on like construction site signage um, and wrapping vehicles and putting graphics on the side of trucks, you know, that were out, out in the field you know doing on construction sites and all and uh that started to kind of evolve it evolved in over the last few years we we have really gotten into interior signage and graphics in buildings so corporate building buildings um, um restaurants retail where we're doing interior signage that could be really big scale graphics that go on the walls um if you've been to jubins lately or mm-hmm. maybe so we do a lot with Peter Scafani and Kevin and, and that group. Um, if you've been to um, Solu or if you went to the Peebos that just opened up, um, we did a lot of graphics in those buildings. And just the, you know, the environment that it creates for the, you know, for, for people that are there eating, it's, it's a really cool thing. It's very different for us. I mentioned like when we were printing the technical documents, our our part of the deal was pretty much over when we printed out a 24 by 36 black and white drawing and gave it to the client they went and did something with it well now we're plastering walls with graphics and then every time we walk in there or somebody else walks in there they get to enjoy that product um so it's it's an exciting thing and when you start thinking about entrepreneurship you know entrepreneurs love having a sign when we put our sign up on our building when we put our sign on our truck You know, we're in business now and that's exciting to see the, you know, the energy and to hear, hear the customers, how, um, just that signage made their day, made them feel like they're in business. Well, it, it adds a little bit of an art artistic element to what would be a bland wall. And with the way that I know you're probably seeing the scenery change within the restaurant business, the corporate business they're trying to get away from like bland walls and add some pizzazz to them, add some, you know, some personality to the walls where beforehand having someone come in and say, okay, we're not going to, you know, paint this wall black and white or gray or whatever. We're going to come in here. We're going to wrap it with something. We're going to put a graphic on there that Letterman's is going to print and it's going to be totally unique and you can customize it however you want. You don't have to worry about, is this too many colors? Is this too many, this or that you customize it however you want. And from, if I'm looking at it from a restaurant standpoint, depending on, you know, the cost of entry to get this stuff done, it's almost as if you can rotate some of the walls 
depending on your budget of the restaurant, where it's right. like, I can now change this wall from this scenery to this scenery over, you know, in five years and have everybody feel like it's a new, fresh right. restaurant. It's yeah. a new, fresh environment to be in. You're no longer limited to, well, it's going to be 20 gallons of paint to paint that wall. Yeah. Now it's going to be, well, we're going to print it, we're going to put it up there, and it's going to be done overnight. Yeah. No, you're right. I mean, some of it can be short term. You keep it up for a few years and replace it with some other new graphic. What happens? I mean, when we have a, a space that looks the same and every day we go in there, it looks exactly the same. Nothing changes. Or if and even if there is some graphics on it, but every day it looks the same, it gets stale. So it's good to make a refresh because as we refresh, people notice it. And, um, and it's kind of an exciting thing, depending on what's put on the wall. The content, you know, the, the ability to create um, wall coverings that communicate the message that the owner is looking for has probably been is the best time ever because there's so much content out, right? I mean, photographs on our corporate networks, photographs on all types of sites that are available for download, some sites where we can get it for free, depending on the licensing. Um, there's a there's just a lot of our iPhones. I mean, we have a lot of content that we can use to create graphics that really communicate the message that tells the story about the business. And as we always heard, I mean, a picture tells a million, you know, the, the story much easier than a bunch of words. So putting the right graphics on the on the wall can communicate a message much stronger than we can ever do it verbally. Oh, a hundred percent. And within the photos, you can incorporate so many more people that is captured instantaneously within somebody walking by. If you have, you know, your a paragraph of words on a wall that is your mission and while it's important and everything, that is going to almost kind of be lost on some people. But if you have a picture of a client shaking hands or your team workers enjoying work or what the scene is that you're trying to depict, that's going to be picked up and subconsciously hit within your customers, your clients, your patients, whatever it may be, right. so much quicker and easier than a paragraph on a wall will be. Yeah, absolutely. So without us working with, you know, architects, um, you know, they have interior designers and there's a lot of interior design firms that are out there and they're constantly creating um, drawings that, that require this type of uh, wall coverings on commercial uh, construction projects. So with our tie to the architects, engineers, and contractors, it's been a natural thing, right? Because our people, our, our employees have been working with the AEC community for a long time. We have a lot of deep relationships. We understand how their businesses work. Um, and we want to be a partner to them to bring solutions to them that make it easy to, to get the wall coverings in the buildings that they're designing and for it to come out right, you know, and for the end user to love it. So um, that's been a fun thing. And the transition has been going on a few years where we've really gotten focused in on that. So the wall coverings, um, we're still really focused in on the fence graphics. So if you've been around the city or around the state and you saw, you know, a construction project going up and there was fence graphics all around it to kind of help with, um, you know, just uh, to, to, to communicate what's going on on that site, what it might be coming, what's coming down the road. Um, maybe some information about leasing, call this number, um, or just marketing information. That We're doing a lot of that. We're, we're doing it. We're delivering it here locally in Louisiana, and we're shipping it outside of Louisiana. So um, if there's a project um, that's, that's being constructed and that's a need, we're, uh, we're, we're certainly trying to help those uh, clients um, to, 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 um, to have that type of product on site. And then the third thing is something relatively new that we kind of pivoted into um, during COVID, which is ADA Braille interior signage. Yeah. Um, we, we had a client, a large client that had a need, um, and they were looking for a different option, um, you know, for, for, for someone else to produce it and um, locally. And um, so we figured out how to do it. We had somebody in our office that kind of took the lead on that and uh, started working with the client and, figured out how could we do it with the equipment we had. Um, we've never had an interest in doing that before. That wasn't really a uh, part of our, um, of our product lineup. But because of the need with this particular client, um, or few clients, uh, we decided to kind of dig into it. And um, 
this employee took a lead, the lead on it and developed a product line. So we started selling it. And to the, you know, once we started selling it to this one particular client, we realized, well, there's a lot of that going on. Um, we've never been a part of that. But again, with our connection back to the architects, engineers, and contractors, we see all those projects going on. We have the relationships with these folks. So we started going back to them and saying, we can help you with this. And we got really good traction on it. So now we're, we're providing ADA Braille, wayfinding, interior signage um, on a lot of big commercial construction projects. And um, there's a lot of growth in that, not just here in Louisiana, but all over the U.S. Well, like you said, it's a product that is needed and having the ability to do it is going to go such a long way. And I mean, tying back to your roots of, like you said, the architect drawings, now you're able to, you were seeing initially kind of what was going in there, but just from a, a 2D dimension. But now you're able to look in it and say, well, wait, from a 3D perspective, here's where we can find little gaps that you're missing and where we can offer solutions for whatever the project may be. I mean, fencing signage alone, like anytime I see a construction site that just has plain, bland fencing, yeah, like just, boring, huh? it's just boring. I'm like, <laughs> this I get, don't get me wrong. It's like you get two, either two points or two thoughts come into the head. Uh, one of curiosity, like what are they hiding from us? Uh-huh. Or <laughs> one of, come on, you could have just spent a few more extra dollars to give us a little bit of information about what you're doing here. Right. But from, what you're, from your point of using that real estate as a valuable part of what is happening behind the scenes, yeah. communicating that message before it's here, getting people excited right. for what's to come. Yeah. I mean, they've got a project happening on Essen that it wasn't until a week ago where there's a building up and there's like so much construction already happened where mm. you even know what the heck it is. Yeah. Like if you'd have taken some time and done a little bit of fence signage sure. and communicated to folks, this is what's to come, built some excitement. It's not necessarily free marketing, but it's strategically placed marketing where people driving by who are potential customers are seeing what it is. Right. And now they're getting excited from each le- from each developmental level and if you time it right, I'm sure you could do like phases of the fence graphics, like phase one, yeah. here's what you're going to see. Phase two, here's what you're going to see. And ultimately, it's just communicating to potential customers, clients, or patients, or what have you, what's to come, what's going to be offered, and what they can expect. Right. I mean, that real estate, in my opinion, is like one of the probably most still underutilized spaces where, like you said, it's just it's ripe for opportunity to get all that done and what Letterman's is doing within the products y'all are offering, I think is going to be a huge step into that space where it's just going to blow it up and really make every construction site realize that value <coughs> within that real estate. Yeah, you're right. Um, and it, we talked earlier about um, branding. I mean, what other, what's a greater opportunity than to have a corner of a busy, you know, um, a busy road for 12 months, you know, where you can have fence screen up or fence wrap up that has your logo all over it that has, you know, what this project is going to be all over it. So that, that, so that everyone that comes through that area, um, starts to realize, okay, this is the general contractor. That's the architect that's associated with the project. And that'll be ingrained in their, in their minds for a long time. Um, it is by far, I think one of the, um, a very affordable marketing opportunity if you go and look at the, you know, if, if you calculate it out by the number of impressions over time, um, throughout that eight month, 12 month, whatever that time period is, you're going to have a lot of people passing that up. So why overlook that opportunity to, to build your brand? Yeah. A hundred percent. We had, um, Ruben Patel with patient plus on, I think yeah. a year and a half or so ago. And he said from the start of construction, they put up a sign, and using their logo, get well soon. Mm-hmm. You know, like we're coming, we're, we're right. after here. So seeing companies like him start utilizing that is just proof to the fact of what you're saying here is 12 months time having a fence up of potential customers seeing the graphic, seeing what's coming about, like why not do it, you know? Right. I mean, you've got to pay for fence covering as it is. If you spend a little bit more and you dump it in your marketing budget, now you've got a good, attractive-looking fence covering that shows people what they can expect, and ultimately that you care about what you're putting up is is a valuable product. Right. Yeah, absolutely. 
So I want to kind of take a little bit of a step backwards back okay. into the history of it a little bit of going through that acquisition. Mm -hmm. So buying a company that does... I mean, in my mind, you're printing from it. If you look at what your, your products were initially of printing, engineering graphics, engineering mm -hmm. documents, architect documents, and then buying something that does graphics, mm -hmm. that's a way out here right. as a totally new product offering. What went through the decision making process to decide that it's time to purchase a new company to offer a whole new variety of products to customers? Yeah. Well, as I was mentioning, um, our, our primary business was suffering you know, year over year with the, the technical document uh, production and printing. So we had to get, we had to figure out another route to go um, if we wanted to keep our revenue up. And um, it was just nationally, we were seeing firms like Letterman's um, go on that route. It was becoming something of interest to company, you know, repographers where they were saying, well, we're printing things, uh, you know, black and white and we do some color, but maybe we can do signage too. So it was, um, you know, it, it seemed like it was the right move for us. Um, and that, that industry is really big. You know, if you look at the Reaper graphics industry, that's a very small niche market, right? If you weren't an engineer or an architect or a contractor, you had no need for our product before we went into sign into graphics. As soon as we went into sign into graphics, our market segments just blew up, right? I mean, it could be a retail shop that wanted some uh, point of purchase signs. It could be a car lot that's putting stuff out for a sale. It could be uh, something mall, you know, a mall. Um, it could be uh, a building that needed a signage on the outside of it. It was, and it, that was a challenge in itself because when you have so many opportunities, it's where, like, what direction do I go in? At one time, we were wrapping a lot of vehicles and um, trailers for like landscape companies. So we we're, so were thinking, well, let's go after all the landscape companies. And then we were, you know, looking at um, uh, wanting to get into a restaurant graphics, and then we were wanting to get into something else. So we had too many options. So we had to start paring that down. And as we pared it down, we kind of gravitated back to AEC, you know, the things that we really knew best, and said, well, they they need things in their buildings, and they need uh, wall coverings, they need all these other things, um, they need graphics on their vehicles, they need uh, branding for their company. Let's start with them. And we really got focused in again on AEC and then started expanding out. I mean, we do, we do a lot of work with, with in the healthcare sector, um, in, um, in the restaurant sector, um, you know, small business sector, um, corporate buildings. I mean, it's, it's really helped us diversify. Um, but it, it felt like it was time and it felt like the right move because, because the fact that it gave us so much new opportunity, that we were not that we were not a part of, and, and really, we, we we didn't have that opportunity in the traditional line of business that we were in. Um, there's a lot of signage being printed. I mean, if you drive around town and you look at at buildings and um, it, it just all the signage that's gone up and being and turning over and being replaced. I mean, it's a lot, um, and it felt like it was a space too that. Depending on our niche and what we were focused in on, you know, we might not, um, we might have limited competition in it. You know, there are a lot of sign companies around town, a lot of graphics companies, but we don't always run into them because there's so much work and everybody kind of has their specialty. You know, yeah, do we overlap with some of them from time to time? Sure. But there's a lot of, there's a lot of, um, a lot of times we don't even see the competitors. Yeah, you you're know. offering different products, you're transitioning to different areas, and you've also, you know, when looking at the element of trust factor between companies doing business with other businesses, it's important to know that you've kind of built this rapport through your past products and what you're offering now. I mean, how important was that element of trust when making the shift from whether it be AEC to IEC or mm -hmm. one product to another? Yeah. Well, I mean, relationships are tremendous in business, as you know. Um, I mean, that's really what we what we had to hold on to in the very beginning when we picked up the signage, the new signage business. We rolled that out immediately to our clients um, because when we were, when we did the evaluation of the business, just kind of the evaluation of um, is it a good move for us? You know, everybody that 
was the the customer of the 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 sign company that we bought they might have had two or three people in their book of business that could be a letterman's customer but everybody in the letterman's book of business could be a signed customer yeah right so we said well this makes total sense we need to do this well, and you've got that track record too if you've already had them as a customer we had relationships they yeah. trusted us already they were doing business with us they were used to writing checks to us it just made sense yeah um for us for us to do it i mean going through that whole vendor setup that's the <laughs> once you get through that vendor process it's just so much easier to, oh we can absorb that service you're after yeah. and we can continue servicing you for different needs yeah but it's been a you know it's been a learning um it's been a learning roller coaster of um, understanding that type of business and um, you know training our our people um, to uh, understand the workflow of signage and graphics and hiring the right people and um, buying the right equipment you know for the ADA Braille we had to invest pretty heavily in some new equipment and software and our people had to get trained um, for us to be able to have the technology to produce that type of signage that's going to be durable and long-term solutions for our clients. Um, then we got into custom painting. A lot of that signage is custom painted. So, uh, you know, we had to buy painting booths and exhaust systems and all these kind of things and have training for our employees how to paint signage. So things we've never done before. Yeah, as you just I mean you're learning <laughs> as you go. We're learning as we go. <laughs> But, you know, the manufacturers have been tremendous training resources, um, you know, online uh, resources that our uh, employees have been able to watch. So we're learning as we go, um, and it, it's getting better every day. So on the, the ADA Braille, I mean, that is something that has always been important, right? But it's ever becoming more so under the spotlight of ensuring that you have proper signage for everyone so they can all – be aware of their surroundings and what's going on. Right. When that first customer approached you of kind of what you were, what they were after, mm. I mean, obviously as a business owner, you want to say, oh, we can handle it, you know? You never want to turn on any business, but I mean, what were the first steps to recognizing the need for it and ultimately how to deliver a product that fit yeah. what they were after? Well, it's, the need is driven by law. Um, I mean, it's 2010, um, it became a requirement and buildings so if there was any kind of a major renovation or um, new construction it had to be it, it's something that had to be on in the, on the premises um, there's there's lots of lots of uh, a lot of rules and regulations and all behind that um, so getting up to speed on some of that first was important um, and then trying to figure out how to make it was the next thing there's a lot of different levels of that kind of signage it can be as simple as just a you know, a, a, an acrylic or some type of a plastic piece that has the, you know, the text on it and the braille and the little pictorial. Um, or it can be really high end um, with, you know, um, frosted acrylics and multiple layers and um, custom, um, you know, vinyls and things on it to make it more of an architectural piece um, that matches the decor of the building and then matches all your other um you know, building signage, identification signage, wayfinding. Um, so it can it can get pretty uh, creative um, uh, with the ADA Braille signage. So um, again, I mentioned that we had an employee that really took an interest in trying to build that product. And at that time, like I said, it was during COVID. So I was, I had my mind on a bunch of other things, just kind of keeping the business going, making sure that we're keeping our customers happy, that we're um, trying to get as much business as we can to, you know, to keep things moving. And he was building this, this ADA Braille thing out. And at first it was, it was kind of like, yeah, just do what you need to do to make it happen. And then as he's building it out, I started seeing the opportunity. And I'm like, man, you're, you're right about this. We need to do it. Let's invest. Let's, let's get, I'm, I'm all in. And um, he's done a tremendous job of, of raw hiding that whole process. And um, you know, coming up, getting up to speed with ADA, um, and um, and promoting it, you know, everything from designing it to selling it to installing it um, and supporting it. So um, it's turning now into a you know a, a department of its own. So from a like a machinery standpoint, did what y'all have before 
fit the ability to make it or were you looking at totally adding a whole new line of equipment, whole new line of machinery mm -hmm. to make this possible? Yeah, the equipment we had um, in-house at the time had the ability to make it. Um, the problem we were running up against was that our equipment couldn't make it for long-term use. Right. Okay. So the the the, the so what, what, durability what the of it, okay, the, difference. the durability of that material and the the way it put the uh, the image on the material and all that durability over time, it could you know flake off if someone uh, sat there and picked on it or or um, it, it 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 could um, the durability was a big issue. Okay. Right. It was fine for certain types of installations, but if you put it at like in a middle school or a high school or something like that, or even a college. Uh, like an environment like that, um, where it gets more abuse, it doesn't hold up as well. So we started to realize, well, okay, this product we have right now is good, and it works for some, but it doesn't work for all. And um, the more we started getting into some of the bidding and, and the construction um, specifications, we realized that there's other, there's other uh, fabrication methods that are on the market. Um, so we started looking into that, and that, that drove us to get new equipment. Um, there's a, a photopolymer type device, is what it's called, a, a photopolymer system, um, where it takes the it takes the acrylic, let's say it's acrylic, and it kind of um, burns out a layer of it, and it will leave your text and your braille and all your your image and all on it. So it's almost like a mono component. So you can't sit, you can't pick it apart or anything. Right. It's it's one piece, and then we'll take that and paint it and do other things to it to make it aesthetically look good. Um, so yeah, there, what we, the equipment we had at the time worked okay to get us into it. But mm -hmm. once we got into it, we realized pretty quickly, well, we need to ramp up on some equipment and software. Well, because like you were saying, now you want the architects, they're working within their design and what they imagine this space is to be, but they've got laws they have to abide by. So it's how can we creatively make this element that's necessary for the building via the law also be architecturally a, a pleasing and also right. have this element that it was designed and put here for a purpose and it wasn't just thrown up here because the law says we have to you know right. it's not just caution tape on the ground saying exits this way how that's do right. we communicate what we have to legally in a creative fashion yeah i've been really impressed with some of the some of the work our teams produced um, this year with the new equipment and the painting booth and then some of the new technology the final product is really it's a very impressive it's a it's from an architectural standpoint it's um, it, it the appearance of it is really really nice and fits well within the buildings that that are being built so that's um you know that that's something that we're really proud of it's uh, it's been an exciting thing to be a part of that and um, that is an that's just that's another example though i mean we walked into this in the middle of covid with zero market share you know and now we're selling ada braille signage and interior signage uh on on you know on large and small construction projects all over louisiana now even outside of louisiana i mean we've we've produced it and shipped it so um that's a that's an opportunity for us. Um, so we're, you know, we're working with our marketing, external marketing company, and we're working to really build that business because there's a lot of, you know, again, we have a very small market share of that. So um, the more, the more that we promote it, the more that we um, talk about the way we, our process and our the the, the photopolymer type style, um, and you know, all the all the reasons to buy. Um, I, I think we're gonna we're going to do well with it. So what is that footprint of Letterman's? With it being a Baton Rouge based company, how far out do y'all actually reach? Um, I mean, Louisiana, we cover Louisiana pretty aggressively. Um, you know, we have an office in Lake Charles also, um, and we have a sign company there. We bought another sign company. We, we had our a traditional printing company there that we bought back in like 01. And then we bought um, we bought a sign company in Lake Charles and integrated that. Um, and those some of those employees are still with us, and they they do a great job and travel all over Louisiana um, doing installations of wall coverings and what other graphics we need too. Um, but yeah, Louisiana 
we, we cover pretty heavy. Um, we're in New Orleans, North Shore, Lafayette, Lake Charles, Baton Rouge, up to Alexandria. We're in those areas on a weekly basis. Um, our, our model, the business model itself has changed a lot. So back when we were doing more traditional document printing, our clients typically would drop something off that morning and want to pick it up in the afternoon, right? Mm-hmm. And we'd run the copies and bind them up and they'd come get it in the afternoon. The, the sign and the graphics type of work that we're doing now is, um, uh, back to, the, to that model with the, the, the technical documents, we had to be close to the customer. So, I mean, we had to have an office. If we weren't, if our office wasn't close to you, then you wouldn't come to us, right? right? You'd stop at some other place that's closer. Um, so it was geographically, um, back, you know, it, it relied very heavily on your geographical location. Um, and we had a number of locations over the years. We had up to six at one point, up to, and in 2009, when the national economy was kind of was really suffering, our business was suffering badly too with the digital tech, you know, the technology and the the, the way that um, our clients were choosing to do business. So um, we scaled it back. Um, we lost a big contract in Mississippi uh, on a on a large project that got shut down, and um, we had one one office in Biloxi, and so we we kind of scaled it back. Um, and um, what we what we found is that the new model of business with sign engine graphics, we don't have to be in all these locations. So we can really invest in the locations that we have now, build that up and deliver it in Louisiana or ship it wherever else, it, wherever it needs to go. Right. Um, so, and the timelines are much different. Instead of it being dropped off and picked up at the end of the day, now we're being notified, you know, months in advance of we've got this project, we need this type of signage on it, um, can you help us? And we go through design, we go through uh, production and samples and approvals and then printing it and scheduling installation. It's just a very different process. Yeah, and you've got the ability now to travel with your clients. So initially if you were printing their blueprints and then you're printing, printing some some initial signage for what they wanted to do in the office, and now they've got sites popping up, you know, all around Louisiana, and then now looking beyond the state of Louisiana, you have the ability to still work with them via technology and say, great, you need this wall covering in two months in, you know, Nashville, not a problem. We're right. going to be able to print it, get our installers up there to you in time, right. and have everything installed. So it's almost as if while your production may be in Louisiana and based out of Baton Rouge and whatnot, your ultimate end delivery can be across the country. It can. And, you know, like on the front end of design, um, our graphic designs, our graphic designers work with other, uh, with the owners or their graphics people or marketing people. <clears throat> we'll do Zoom consultations. We'll work through, you know, the the conceptual part of building a con, a, 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 a con, you know, a design concept. And then once that's approved, then it gets in, goes into production. So um, even that part of the process, we don't have to be right in front of the customer to make it work. Right. So within this continuing of relationship building and expanding your products, I mean, what do you tell the potential customers kind of what makes you a little different Mm -hmm. from working with somebody else within what you're doing? Yeah, well, we're still a we're still a pretty small firm, so um, we're um, we're really focused in on relationships and um, and and just you know a a, a deep level of service. Um, and I know that's du- you can duplicate that to some degree pretty easily, um, but service is really in, in the relationship. And Letterman's being tied so deeply to the AEC design professional community and us just knowing their business. I find that that's been very helpful. Um, so, you know, the, the process that we try to run our, our, our clients through where we are a full resource from the very beginning of the design and being a consultant on that um, to bringing them through the production and the installation of the graphics. Um, you know, we find that against big, big competitors that we're up against, 
their timeline to turn something around like that is not always as fast just because they have a lot of other layers that go into it. Right. Um, our ability as being a small company, we can make decisions fast. And if we want to do something different to try to help a client because of the situation they're in um, from a timeline or, or whatever that might be, we can do it. So, um, you know, we're nimble. We're, we can do things quickly. Um, and, and that sometimes is really important when on some of these projects. Yeah, you've got the flexibility to pivot within a project where those larger firms are like, well, we've already scheduled this in our printer. Right. It, it's happening. Yep. You know, you got to like, get in the queue. <laughs> you got to get, you right, you get in the printer queue, yeah, you gotta get in the queue. before you can get something where if, you know, they send you a contact or a project or proposal that morning, yeah. they make some changes later on. You still have the ability to say, not a problem, make the change, we'll get it enacted. Right. Because you've got that laser focus on those clients as they walk through the door and that flexibility and that movement. Yeah, and some of the some of these firms too, they they um they rely on really big, big contracts, right? So they're producing lots of thing <laughs> lots of signage at once for a particular customer, where some of our deals, sometimes we only deliver ten, right? But that's what they need for that particular pro for that particular project. And there are others where we're doing, you know, several hundred of them. So um, we're we're happy with small projects as well as the large projects. I mean, somebody's got to service them. Why not be you? Yeah, exactly. And we try to treat them all the same too. You know, you know so the person that's the smaller account, we try to give them just as much attention uh, because you never know where they're going to go. Right? They might grow into the next biggest um, general contractor or design professional or or you know whatever they are uh, in their industry. So what would you kind of say your initial target market would be within mm -hmm. what y'all are offering? Well, I mentioned AEC a bunch of times, and now we've really focused on what we're calling AIC, which is architects, interior, interior designers, and contractors. Those three, um, those three lines of business um, are, are, are really who put these, these finished buildings together. Right, so the architects designing it, interior designers working on all the interior space and uh, a lot of the graphics and the signage packages and all that, and then the general contractors building it. So there are certain levels, or, or our, our sales cycle is kind of different depending on who, you know, what, what phase it's in. But those are really the three that we're really heavily focused on right now for, for, the, um, for the wall coverings, for the ADA Braille, and for the fence graphics that we've really been promoting. So what kind of, I mean, is it just the product offering that made this transition from AEC to AIC, or was there something else that kind of led that? Well, the engineering uh, group doesn't do a whole lot with um, the interior design, you know, or obviously the construction of the, biz the building. Um, they still do a lot of our traditional work, right? They're doing the technical document printing. Um, the, so engineers are still doing that type of work with us, but they're not really, when we think about the, wall coverings and the ADA braille and the, the, the fence screen or fence wraps, that's not something that really engineering companies get involved in. Yeah, they're just focused on making sure everything drains make right sure, and everything yeah, flows sure right. Building <laughs> and nothing uh, stays falls. up, doesn't fall apart, right? <laughs> so, I mean, over your career, you've kind of experienced a lot. You've bought some businesses. Mm -hmm. And this is kind of translated into what you also do a little bit of with the teaching. You also do some consulting. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about what you're doing within those areas. Yeah, well, the teaching, I've been teaching at uh, LSU since, I guess, around 2015. Um, and it started out teaching entrepreneurship. Um, I went back um, and got um, my, ma my MBA later in life. Um, and then I continued and finished up a PhD at LSU. And I did, um, I did my, my studies were very business related, um, specifically in family owned business. And it, my, my research looked at um, the leadership transition from one generation to the next within a company. Um, and, and about how do we prepare for that? Um, how much does planning really contribute to success? So I did studies and worked with small businesses and tried to, um, you know, put together a quality research that would allow me to finish my PhD program. And the whole time I've done that, I've, you know, when I did the MBA, I had an interest in teaching. Um, and then, um, but I also thought it was good for the business too, to have an understanding of operations and accounting and, you know, all, all the different things that go into running a business. 
Um, but um, I've always had an interest in teaching. So I just kept on going and I finished the PhD in 2016. I graduated with my PhD when my oldest son graduated from high school. <laughs> so uh, that's all they know for me is like my wife and I were went, went to school after we had kids. So we've always been in school uh, with them. Um, but teaching was, was of interest, um, being able to um, bring the practical um, world to the academic, you know, the academic world where, um, and try to figure out, well, okay, these are the things that the book says, but will that really work in, in, uh, in the real world and the things that we're doing? And all my classes um, have been a lot of fun to me, um, you know, where we did projects, where we worked with other companies, small companies, to analyze their business and do like consulting engagements. Um, we've done uh, where we had the university put up some money uh, for students to start a business during a semester. And that could be anything from resume writing to you know graphics to social media posting to a product or something that you wanted to make. And the students had to run a business for a semester. And then they report back on how much money did I make? What did it cost to make the product? You know, uh, how did I deliver it? Where were, where were my struggles? Um, and it was really interesting because um, students, you will never get an experience like that from a textbook, right? I mean, oh, they gosh, learned man. so much in that course. Um, and it was a lot of fun, too. And um, just to hear some of the things that the students were going through and some of the things that they were learning and um, even some of the struggles. You know, it's, it's, it always um, makes a difference when you don't plan about how you're going to deal with your business and then you get into business and you start making money and somebody wants to get out of the business and now you have to all the, make all the decisions and if we would have made them from the very beginning when we had no money it would probably have been a lot easier uh, than when we do have some money now and we're trying to say you know you didn't do this and I did that and a lot more involved. Look I always preach every day within the CPA world, documentation is the number one important thing that you need to do, whatever it may be, whether it's a simple transaction of you fronted money for this tr for this deal and the company's going to pay you back or this is part of your contribution and you got more equity, whatever the deal, whatever the situation may be, documenting everything is so crucially important. Yeah. And I actually ended up taking that class. It was a $100 micro loan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I took it with Franz, Dr. Oh, Franz yeah. Lorke. Uh -huh. Yeah. And so when we were there, part of the homework assignments was keeping track of your income and your expenses. Oh. And I don't want to say that I necessarily cheated the system, <laughs> but I created a business oh, that, was right. a, I remember that. that was an accounting you firm. You were doing that for other students. I was you? doing it for other students <laughs> and they were paying me. Yeah. So yeah. one person in academics could look at it as the students were paying me to do their homework. But in the <clears throat> entrepreneurship world, they were paying me to be their bookkeeper, their yeah. accountant. Yeah. They were outsourcing that element of their business in order to continue generating revenue uh -huh. and generating right. and you know keeping the business afloat. And when I approached him about this, I said, okay, here's my game plan. Here's what I want to do. I understand that the products I'm delivering are actual homework assignments. Is that going to run into any issues? And I think he had to get it approved. He had to get my business approved by the <laughs> university <laughs> that I wasn't taken away from the learning experience of others because yeah. it's like you said, in the books, it says one thing, but how does that right. transpose into real life? Yeah. I got into being a CPA for the reason of knowing entrepreneurs may not be so savvy with QuickBooks, yeah. but they can surely know how to put up a wall covering way right. better than I can. That's right. And if I can fill that void and help them out, mm -hmm. their business is going to continue going yeah. on so much longer. World. I mean, uh, you know, I mean, entrepreneurs, like you said, they outsource a lot of different things. Accounting is one of them. Absolutely. They don't want to be sitting there trying to account for everything that the, every expense they did and every cost of good and everything like that. They want to be able to just do their craft make some money and let you deal with accounting for it and put it in a little little chart, T charts and all that stuff. I, I probably, <laughs> no, it's on my old computer. I, I probably, I saved Excel files for every single company I had. And <clears throat> I mean, I, I delivered the most work products for the, <laughs> for the class, yeah. but still like I, I had, I think 10 or 12 students that were paying me yeah. to 
generate these work products. And at the end of the semester, they're like, hey, well, how much money of the microloan did you use? And I'm like, well, I didn't use any of it because I uh -huh. had a computer. I had resources right. available. And I, so I just generated revenue from it. And it was, yeah. I think, for everyone involved because I did actually like have to sit down with them and work through some of their expenses and whatnot. So it was that element of what you're doing with these businesses of consulting and working through these problems. So it wasn't like I was a shortcut for them. And I expressed yeah. that from the get go. I'm not a shortcut. Yeah. I'm merely what you're going to experience in the real world. Right. And so with you being involved in both the real world and the academic world, I mean, how do you see that as aligning you and your organization to better help and serve the Baton Rouge community? Well, I mean, just just the fact that you know bringing that that type of experience to university i think it creates um students that are more well-rounded about how to apply the things that they've learned um at a business and you know that's been there's there's been a couple of different ways of approaching entrepreneurship at lsu at least from the way that, that the things that i've been involved in and it's not always teaching somebody you know a student to go start a new business it's teaching students how to be entrepreneurial in a business and to think differently and to be creative and to identify risk that will bring a reward and to plan for it so that your opportunity for success is as high as it potentially can be. Right. Um, and they can go do that for somebody else. They can go work for someone else for a period of time and be a more valuable employee because they think a little bit different than everyone else. Um, so I think that's I think there's a lot of value in that, um, and then of course when you see students actually go out and get involved in their own family business or start up their own business, um, that's a, a, a really rewarding too. And I've been pretty fortunate for a number of students that are, have been in my course over the years that have kept in touch and shared. You know, hey, I'm doing this with my business now, or I actually started this thing up, or I just got an email today from someone that said. I want to start a business. Um, I need your help. So I'll go do that. You know, I'll go sit and have coffee and, and talk with them about it and try to help them through it. Um, like we, we don't ever get where we're going without having somebody to help us through that, right? It's a really could be a tough journey without help. So um, when I was going through my PhD program, um, I had a, a couple of great mentors that became really good friends. And they showed me the way as we were going through the program. And they kept telling me, these are the things you need to do. These are the things you need to think about. And it made, my, it made the journey so much more um, effective and enjoyable. Um, and when I asked them, what do you need me to do? How can I repay you? They said, give it back. So I did that for others that were coming into the program. And it's nothing different with the, the entrepreneur students. I mean, just being having the opportunity to be able to give back to them and say, let me help you, you know, avoid some of the pitfalls that I've been through, you know, that others have been through, um, so that you don't have to endure those challenges and maybe go around it and make your journey a little bit smoother. Either way, it's a rough journey, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's not, a, an, it's it's not, not an easy, easy journey. If it was, everybody would be doing it. Um, it's, uh, it it's, it's a tough thing um, to be an entrepreneur sometimes. Um, and in other days, it's, 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 um, it's so rewarding that it makes it all worth it. Yeah, those sleepless nights can be worthwhile whenever you're able to see that level of success come within your business and know that, while you had a team doing it, it like originated with you, you know, yeah. and having that self-fulfillment of getting something done off the ground, people involved, a team built, product delivered, customers satisfied. It's like you have this sense of accomplishment that something you've done has turned into what it is. Yeah. And I mean, being an entrepreneur, serving people and being able to get that product to the clients, to the customers, whatever it may be, and see them enjoy it in the way that you hoped they would I mean, that's just such a rewarding moment. Yeah. You know, I'm sure when you walk into your restaurants and see the wall coverings or you drive by a construction site and see the fence wraps or yeah. you're into a commercial building and see the ADA stuff coming to life, yeah. you're able to see the products that y'all are making and delivering being used every single day by people. And you almost get like the sense of, wow, we built that as a team. We yeah. built that as an organization. It's so rewarding and right. so fulfilling. But all that has to come with worrisome nights, right. stress, 
all of the other sides of on being an entrepreneur of worrying sometimes worrying about are we going to have enough money to make payroll this week you know yeah. that's the the common entrepreneur sure. phrase i gotta make payroll yeah, I, gotta make payroll. I gotta make payroll because yeah. at the end of the day you're servicing your clients and your customers but you're also <coughs> paying for people to live right you're, you're paying people it's a big responsibility right it's a huge responsibility you're taking their fine their personal financials under your own domain right and making sure that you do everything that's possible that they can wake up tomorrow and yeah. know that they've got a paycheck coming. Right. One of the things you just talked about, um, about, you know, seeing those spaces and um, being able to uh, truly appreciate just the, our part of it and, and, and what it's created in those environments. Um, we just had a meeting at Letterman's the other day where um, we were all the production, uh, really everybody at the office came together and we had a meeting and one of the things that I talked to them about was um, I don't think I do a good enough job of really showing them the final product you know everybody that is a part of the production right you know there's a lot of frustrating things and all that happen throughout the process of these projects sometimes where artwork might not be right or colors need to be changed or deadlines are getting pushed back you know or, or shorter there's a lot of things that are our guys our production people are just pushing to make it happen and then the installers take all the final product and, and and take it out the shop and go put it up on the walls, and you know they see it and then they go back on they go to the next job. But everybody that was a part of the process didn't see it maybe or or hasn't seen it, and um, so we're going out and doing uh, you know we're going to go out and f um, photograph a lot of that work and create. Um, um, something that we can display in our office and all that. But one of it, one of the reasons why we're doing that is because I want everybody to see what they're a part of. It's much bigger than the finishing of a banner or a graphic. It's much bigger than laying something out on a computer. That's their little piece to it. But there's a really big end product that's pretty cool and amazing. And I want them to see that because I, I want them to be proud of it. Yeah. It's, it's good work. And And showing them what they've made and that it's worthy of being proud of is huge from a developmental yeah. standpoint of your team of them as a person like that just goes miles beyond somebody doing control c and control v in a computer right for a couple hours getting the products to line up you yeah, know absolutely that is just so huge to see that finished product and i think it's an amazing thing what you're doing with your organization and making sure that everybody can see here's what your job resulted in yeah. Because without your job and your position and your part in this piece, we would Couldn't not be able to it. deliver it. Yeah, that's right. So as we kind of start to wrap up the show, uh -huh. we like to ask a set list of questions to okay. everybody. And that first one being, what is something you did as a kid you wish you could still <laughs> do today? Oh, my gosh. Um, when I was a kid, I skateboarded a lot. You and me both. Um, and I really enjoyed it. And... Um, you know, just being carefree, just going out and hitting the roads and just, you know, just enjoying every everything I was doing and not having to worry about payroll and all these other things. You know, it was uh, just that carefree um, ability. Um, you know, that would be nice to have every once in a while. Yeah, they ability uh, to let loose. <laughs> yeah, all right. Uh, yeah. And you just, just don't have a lot of um, responsibilities, you know? <laughs> yeah, go, go down to uh, the, the Breck Velodrome and kind right. of ride for a yeah. few hours, you know? Yeah. Oh, you know, my kids went through a time frame where they were skateboarding and stuff. And, uh, of course, I was older when I, than when I was a kid skateboarding. And I thought, I could still do this. You know, let me try some of these tricks I did in the past, you know, when I was younger. And it didn't work out that great. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, you you weren't as young as you once were. <laughs> no, it looked a lot better in my mind when <laughs> than what actually happened. Yeah, but you got to try that every I now. I think my again, wife got yeah. a phone call. Who's a nurse? And they're like, "Uh oh, dad just busted pretty bad. <laughs> what should we do?" <laughs> Mom, dad's bleeding. What do we do? <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> so, Let Letterman's has seen a consistent transition and evolvement over the years. Mm -hmm. both with the times and with the advancement of technology yeah. and the demanding ever demanding customer base mm -hmm. and within that your phd i mean there's so much that you've done over the years i'm sure you've gathered lessons along the way mm -hmm. so what are three lessons you've gathered throughout your career thus far 
Yeah, uh, it's hard to come up with three because there's been a lot of lessons, um, you know, um, just that I've learned through business and I've learned from other business uh, people that shared information. And I think that's tremendous, as I mentioned earlier. Um, outlets like this is tremendous um, to be able to hear from others. But, um, you know, one of the core one of the core principles that I always go back to uh, that my, my dad and his partner um, taught me was c customer focus. Um, we got to stay focused on our clients and their needs and the things that are important to them and what, what they need to be productive in their business. Because if we don't offer it, they don't need us anymore. So, you know, getting back to the, anytime we, you know, we've had any kind of major transition in our business, we always get back to the basics. And that's one of them is customer focus um, and um, making sure that we're thinking about our clients um, and their needs uh, more than ours, because without them, we, we don't exist. So, uh, you know, customer focus. Um, another one is, um, you know, great people build great companies. So hiring is really important, finding the right people. Um, Letterman's has been lucky to have some long-term employees that have been with us for a long time and they've they've um, they've seen our industry develop they've seen the things that we're doing in the our building develop over the years they've had some um, really good relationships with our clients and they have you know institutional knowledge that if it walked away it would hurt um, so we've got some really good people and we're hiring we've hired some new people too that are that are really good at what they do. Um, you know, they're, they're very talented people and they're going to help us to grow to the next level. Right. So we got to have, we got to have the right people. Um, and that, that's our most important a asset. Um, and I guess the third one, um, is that it, it's okay that you don't always know the answer, right? 100%. I don't know all the answers. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I rely on our good people. I rely on, um, people in my network, I rely on, um, our employees, um, to help figure it out. And, um, so it, you don't always have to have the answers, but you need to know where to go look for them. Right. And, um, and it's okay that someone else can help you with that. So, um, I think those are probably some of the big, big lessons I've learned over time. Yeah, man, those are all extremely incredible, important lessons that every entrepreneur knows and understands within their journey and within what they're building. Yeah. So what is something you love about Baton Rouge? I love about Baton Rouge. <laughs> you know, I, I moved here um, in uh, 1980, right around 1980. I was born in Houston, um, lived in New Orleans a little while, San Antonio, and came here. So Baton Rouge for me is home, right? I mean, I've been here for... Uh, well, you know, majority of my life, I've been in Baton Rouge. I met my wife in Baton Rouge. My kids grew up here. Um, so I love that about Baton Rouge, that my family's here. Um, I love what Baton Rouge has provided for my family with our business, the support, um, you know, the allowing us to be providers for companies um, around, around Baton Rouge that need our products and services. Um, that's been really important to me, and I love the fact that they've allowed us to be successful. Um, and there's just a lot of great people in town. I mean, good friends. Um, I think the opportunity for networking and to um, connect with people is easy. Um, and and I, don't, I don't travel a lot, so it's hard for me to really say, you know, what it's like in New York or in other, other areas to develop networks and all, but I find it you know, I find it um, that people are pretty friendly and open to talking with you about, you know, your business and how you can help and, um, you know, sharing the stories. So, um, yeah, Baton Rouge has a lot of really good things going on. And it's, it's been a lot of progress over the years. I mean, just right where we're at on Government Street. I mean, the things that have occurred on government with the road diet and the you know, the restaurants coming onto Government Street and the retail and just that environment, it's cool. I mean, and we're seeing that around around the city, um, and, and that's that's always exciting. So I, I think Baton Rouge is, 
has been a good place for me and I'm glad to call it home. Yeah, it's it's come a long way and it's come a long way rapidly over the last few years and it's exciting to see that growth, that development and the continuation of progressing towards becoming an attractive city for all. Yeah. So for the final question, what can I do to help you? What can you do to help me? Um, spread the word. <laughs> you have a huge network. Let everybody know what Letterman's is up to. That's that's our you know that's been our our big challenge is our branding um, because if you talk to a lot of people, uh, a lot of our previous clients or people around the city. Uh, what you know? What do you know about Letterman's? A lot of people associate us with our past history of Reaper Graphics, and when we go and show them all the things we're doing now, they say, well, "I had no idea you were doing that." So we're really trying to work hard, and 2023 is going to be a year where we're going to push that hard. Of really trying to close that gap and make sure that we um, that everyone knows what we're doing. Um, so, but you're doing a lot of really good things right now with just this outlet of communicating, uh, letting entrepreneurs tell their story, um, sharing some of the things that they've learned over the years. I mean, you're, you're contributing to the, to the entrepreneurial ecosystem, and I appreciate that. And I appreciate you allowing me to be here today to, to be a part of it. Um, so you're already doing a lot of things that help me. Um, but just stay connected. Let's stay connected. I need to buy you lunch soon. <laughs> I'll never turn down lunch. <laughs> I mean, and that's, what, what you described is in part why I started doing what we're doing with the show is because I saw there was a need within the city to have these stories told, to have these entrepreneurs come on and share what they're doing, and <clears throat> to then be able to have a documented history of that, yeah. you know, and to show that. I had somebody ask me today, Patrick, are you ever worried you're going to run out of guests? And I'm like, no, I'm not worried about that. <laughs> By the time I run out of guests, I'll be old enough where I'll just I'll be able to hang up the hat and know what I've done has been well. Right. Because there's so many great people in the community and around Baton Rouge and in Baton Rouge doing wonderful things. Yeah. That it's just it's it's gonna last for as long as my lifetime is gonna be here and hopefully beyond. So I'm yeah. glad to have Letterman's as being a part of that history. Yeah, thanks so much. So thank you very much, Stephen, for coming on the show. And thank you, everybody else, for watching or listening to us, whatever platform you're consuming. By all means, if you're in the business for graphics, you're in for wall prints, for ADA uh, printing, and also for fence wraps, contractors, interior designs, and architects, it's unused real estate. Use that space. I think fence wrappings have a lot more potential than we're already using them for. So make sure you reach out to Letterman's if you're in need of any of those services. And also just give Stephen a call if maybe you want to bounce some consulting ideas off of him. If you're an entrepreneur looking to get started, or maybe you're an entrepreneur looking to just have some questions answered, he's going to be a great resource. And if you're a student listening to this and you're at LSU and you're not aware about the entrepreneurship department or anything happening over there at the university, reach out to Stephen reach out to the department. There are so many resources available to you as a student, whether you're undergrad and they're graduate, PhD, whatever it may be. There's so many people there that want to help you succeed, whether it's get a business off the ground, continue pursuing the business you created before college. Just reach out to them. There's resources available. And I'd be grateful if you let them know you came from the Patty G Show. So thank you all very much for listening. This has been the latest episode of the Patty G Show. Thank you so much to the wonderful sponsors that make the show possible each and every week. Hear a little bit more about them right now. Sell your home for a $399 flat fee with Falaya. No, seriously. Falaya will list your home on the MLS and help you get all the way to the closing table for as little as a $399 flat fee. Our online platform is insanely easy to use and will save you thousands. If you're thinking about selling your home in 2022 and want to keep more of your hard-earned equity in your pocket, you need to check out Falaya. Falaya, real estate reimagined. Thank you all so very much for listening to this episode of the Patty G Show brought to you by Government Taco. They're located on the corner of Government Street and Jefferson Highway. Jay is always slinging up a new taco of the month. So if you're a frequenter to Government Taco, let us know in the comments what you thought about this month's taco of the month. If you're not a frequenter, Maybe trying out this month's taco might just convert you. Big thanks over to them at Government Taco for making the Patty G Show possible. 
Imagine taxiing on a plane looking toward the end of the runway. It seems so far away, it's even hard to see it. And that's what the concept of retirement probably felt like when you were in your 20s, 30s, and 40s, way far in the distance, not visible or even a concern. But as you turn 50, something happens. Retirement suddenly seems like something real, something not too far away. In your 50s, you are rolling down the runway. Retirement is getting closer and closer, faster and faster, weeks and months zipping by. But are you even ready for a successful takeoff to retirement? Fear not, there's still runway left. But the time is now. Time to make progress and time to get a plan. The Runway Decade will help you get organized, get energized, and give you the direction you need to take off to your desired retirement. The Runway Decade, building a pre-retirement flight plan in your 50s. Thank you to Mercedes-Benz of Baton Rouge for making this show possible. Nick Pentis is a past guest. We love having him on. Listening to him talk about the culture they have over at Mercedes-Benz of Baton Rouge is really an incredible thing to hear. How they treat not only their employees, but every customer that walks through the door. You are more than just a number to them. They're going to give you that white glove, concierge service every step of the way. They're going to make you feel like family and take what can be a stressful time in people's life. Shopping for a car, they're going to make it so enjoyable and so pleasurable. You're going to want to go back there time and time again for every new vehicle. Thank you so very much for Mercedes-Benz of making this show possible. Thank you to our wonderful sponsor, Lake Men's Health Center with our Lady of the Lake Physicians Group. Guys, I know it's tough to get out and go to the doctor. I know it's challenging to find time in our busy days, but I promise you, signing up to be a part of this group with Dr. Curtis Chastain and Dr. Tyler Boudreau, you won't regret it for several reasons, but most of those being the fact of the time it saves, where you're able to get in on the same day, get that appointment done, and spend that time you need to talk with them about what your health goals and concerns are, as well as ensuring that the financial investments you have, you will be able to live out and see those come to fruition. So if you're an investing guy, you know all about and planning for the future and investing in the future. There's no other more important thing to invest in than your health. Make sure you go check them out, our Lady of the Lake Physicians Group Men's Health Center, and tell them Patty G sent you. McClavey's Limited, a proud sponsor of the Patty G Show, has been serving the Baton Rouge area proudly for 40 plus years. Gentlemen and ladies, if you're shopping for your man, there is no other place in the Baton Rouge area to get your clothing, whether it's game day needs, everyday needs, business attire, formal attire, whatever you want, go over there, see Frank and Ashley. It's a father-daughter duo. They do incredible things in their store. They will outfit you from as simply a shirt that you need for one evening or all the way to a full wardrobe overhaul. They're going to take care of you every step of the way, and be sure and let them know that Patty G Show sent you. Simple.